Take note. Big Beach. We're here. I'm at now. It's different this time. What's up guys, Terry and Trey here, and we are four games into the season. Yes, as Knicks fans, we're excited because we are three and one, and it's a nice start to the season. And you know we like to get excited about any little thing we can get excited about. But we feel legit, we feel in a really nice, comfortable position where we are right now. And we want to talk about five takeaways that we have um, four games into the season. Number one, the bench is ridiculous. We all kind of knew this before the season, right? Building this squad, building this team, what they've done in the offseason, what they put together, put together at least 10 players that can play consistently. One of the tweets I saw recently from a reporter was just bringing up how the Knicks are so deep. Everyone on any night can give you something. You have to love what the bench is giving you. They've been better than the starters relative to the position. You got IQ coming off the bench playing well. Derek Rose coming off the bench doing everything. Obi Toppin, who we'll talk about mm -hmm. more, right? We don't even have Nerlens Noel back yet. Right. He, right. Hasn't, he, he hasn't. He hasn't played yet. He hasn't played yet. We, we actually are the. Uh, we actually are number two in the league for our bench players. I think we're scoring forty-one points, and I think yep. the Miami Heat is above Miami's us number fifty one. something. But to me, it kind of feels like you can mix things up a little bit when you have that, because you do have scoring kind of everywhere. Like you said, ten players that can actually score points for us. Yeah, I mean, look, Derrick Rose was closing crunch time games last year. He's still doing it this year, but now he have a starting point guard in Kemba. Right? You have Alec Burks who had to play a lot with the starters last year, even play point guard sometimes, ball handling. Now he's on the bench as well. Obi Toppin is so much better, quickly is better, and we haven't had Nerlens Noel back yet. Todd's yeah. been filling in. So there's just so much potential there with the bench. The NBA season is a marathon, and I think over the season, you're going to see that bench continuously win us games and keep us in games. What will be interesting though is when we get to the playoffs, the benches are short and teams don't play their bench as much. They play like eight, nine guys max. Mm -hmm. So that advantage won't be as big because right now I can clearly see when we play teams that are equal in talent or even better than us, maybe we're down by a little bit, but once our bench comes in, they just yeah, they, blitz they, them off the they I love it because it's yeah. almost like no matter how we start, the bench comes off and it's like they take us to a next level. Even with their energy, even if they're yeah. not necessarily scoring points, their energy is very different. It's almost like they're hungry and thirsty for it. Secondly, we want to talk about the growth of our young team, which is particularly players you want to mention will be Mitchell Robinson, Obi Toppin, and IQ. Yeah, those guys have been killing it to start the season. Two players I really want to talk about, we're going to mention RJ as well. Mitchell Robinson, he spoke a big game about coming in stronger, eating, lifting, everything, and he's been proving it on the court. He's, he's averaging 10.5 rebounds per game. He is not exactly staying out of foul trouble, but the fouls he, he's making now are making a lot more sense. Against Embiid, I thought he was so impressive. He stayed as disciplined as he could against an elite talent like that. His rim protection, this is something we really, really, really missed last year when we played against the Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Hawks, I was going to say, him against yeah. Trey Young. I think he would have shut Trey Young up. At least in the paint, at least in the paint. <laughs> but that's the thing, Mitch adds a huge element to our team, literally now, as the guy is humongous. And I'm loving how he's playing. I'm loving his energy. I'm still a bit worried the way he falls on the floor and dives. And sometimes I'm like, oh, God, how you long is he always are gonna... with these big guys, and especially because yeah. he's somewhat prone to injury he, now. He's definitely prone to injury. So and when you see those big guys fall, especially now he's bigger and stronger and heavier, yeah. it's almost like, are you going to damage yourself because you're so heavy? Listen, already, this season, four games in, I think about two or three times already, it's already looked like, oh, no, that's a serious injury. Yeah. But it's not, thank God. Loving having Mitch back stay healthy. Obi Toppin. Wow. Well, I mean, the, the fact that the fans are cheering for him, we all see it. Us Knicks fans are really intelligent basketball fans. We like and to think so. We like to think so. <laughs> and um, Obi Toppin has definitely made that step that you want to see. That We drafted him as our eighth pick. Yeah. And this is what you want to see from your eighth pick. You want to see that it was worth it. Worth him being picked so high. Yep. And so I think we are definitely seeing that with him. He seems to be aggressive. Yep. He's like diving for the ball. He, um, he's I'm electric. Gonna... This is the thing. He's not lost anymore he's, too. He's going for it. He's, he's going, going for, it. for it. Listen, Obi on the fast break. Ali oops. Every single no, no, game. No more blinders on. No right? blinders like he's, on. He's, he's clearly seeing. He's yeah. seeing everything. <laughs> yeah. um, one thing I want to say that I really love is just his overall energy around the rim. He has a couple really impressive layups. He's showing off his athleticism a bit more. Against Philly, he had that crazy layup where he kind of went around. I think and beat yep, and laid it up. In the back. <laughs> crazy dunks every game. 
on the break, hitting his threes. He is so exciting to watch, and you feel when he comes into the game, the entire crowd, the team just lifts up to another level. It's like Obi is here. And last thing, one right. real quick, Sorry. Derek Rose with Obi. We saw that chemistry last year. We're seeing it even more this year. And this is going to grow so much. And when you talk about that bench again, which you right. brought up, Obi on the bench is feasting against backup power forwards, and he's playing a bit of the five. You're seeing him and Randall now playing four or five together for mm -hmm. that offensive punch. Loving it. I'm so impressed with Obi. The only thing I will say that I don't want to happen is I don't want him to get too ahead of himself. Right. I don't want him to get, because you almost need a little bit of that humility and, and humbleness, right, to still come out and play a really good game. The fact that the ch crowd is cheering for him, he knows we all love him. He knows he's playing well. He knows he's improved. So I don't want that to get too much to his yeah. head where he then starts feeling like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm Obi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's almost like you want it a little bit, but you don't want it too much. That's the NBA. It's a fine balance between having enough confidence. Confidence and not cocky. Into... Con confidence exactly. and not too cocky. That's what exactly. you want. <laughs> I would say this with Obi, though. Last year was a bit of a struggle for him at times. This whole New York team, you saw Tom Thibodeau going in on Obi when he messed up a couple of games ago, mm -hmm. just screaming at him even though he was playing fairly right, well. He messed right. So I, I don't think Tibbs is letting these guys get big oh, headed Tibbs, right Tibbs is not. He's but, cutting but, you down. But the fans are. The fans are, but <laughs> Tibbs is going to be right in there like, don't listen to that. Get back to the game. <laughs> last, let's talk about IQ. A, little, a couple of rough showings early, not, no, not the best first game, but last game against Philly, he's showing um, you know, his three-point shooting that we know, his energy. IQ is this bouncy guy. I have no worries about IQ overall. I love that. You know, if Kemba's not playing well one night, Derek Rose can play. We got IQ to back him up. He's showing a little bit more point guard skills, but mm -hmm. quickly is quickly. Um, he's exciting, and he brings all the energy we need. And again, I know we brought up the bench before, but these young guys are coming off the bench doing really well. The one guy who hasn't really gotten off the schneid yet, as they say, is RJ. Right. Who's been starting kind of well in the last game, but he's been a bit iffy. I think he's struggling to find his role. Uh, yeah, RJ last year was like our second option as far as scoring, right? right? So now what we're going to see this year, he's not going to get as much playing time. He doesn't need to. Right. But I think because of that too, he may struggle with knowing exactly where does he fit and what is he supposed to be providing for the team. Yeah, I see. So you see his defense has been better this year. A lot of people have been saying he's going to have to be the three and D guy like Reggie Bullock was to kind of fill that role because Fournier is a shot maker. Kemba is a shot maker. So RJ, you know, obviously his three-point shooting has improved a lot since his rookie year, but he's not exactly that guy yet. So interesting to see how he plays out. I'm not worried about RJ. I'm I still have a lot about. of talk online. Yeah about you know year three so year three these guys who are high picks usually take that next next step and right. become like the real star of the team right you've seen this with trey young you've seen this with a lot of guys our team is rarely constructed so rj is necessarily going to do that on a team where randall is better than him mm -hmm. and is our main option right and yeah. then and then we just got kemba two new acquisitions exactly. in kemba and evan right so, so. It's, it's not as clear cut but i feel here's how i feel about this right and it's gonna be interesting because you have to pay rj soon and I really don't know what you pay him because most of these guys, you're like, oh, they're a max player now. Right. But RJ is not really a max player now, but it's kind of one of those symbolic maxes where maybe mm -hmm. you need to pay him to say, right. hey, look, you know you're going to get better. Yeah. I think RJ is going to just incrementally improve over his career. I see him like Jimmy Butler where he just gets better and better every right. year and doesn't necessarily explode in one year and become a superstar like some of these other guys have. Right. But give RJ time. It's early in the season. It's all going to shake out. But his defense this year has been incredible all over J Jason Tatum in that first game. And he's been really good so far. So if, if he has a step back offensively in terms of his numbers... It's okay exactly, because of the rest of the team. Right. 100%. The new additions are adding an extra element to our offense. Absolutely. I mean, last year we had only Randall. Yes, <laughs> RJ was our second option, but it was pretty much Randall's team and going to Randall to score. It was like, give him the ball, let him score. We had, and we haven't had uh, players around him that could really help him at all. Yep. So now we have two great players and Evan Fournier and Kemba Walker that not only can they score, they can move the ball around the court and create plays yep. and even defend a little bit. I mean, Kemba, even as small as he is, is He's still, some effort. still sometimes ready to sacrifice his yeah, body to get, to, to get a hit. <laughs> Um, but it really is great for the team because, like I said, it was only Julius Randle. So now we have two other guys that can give us some points. And something we always complain about, like, who else can score? Exactly. And look, specifically point guard play, we've suffered through a long list of poor point guards. Frank, who we love, but was not scoring. I'm going to go through the names. Just too yeah, many. Okay. It's right. Alfred, it's Dennis Smith Jr. It's, it's, we didn't have a point guard. It's let's, Ramon Sessions, if you remember let's, him. Let's, oh, let's, let's just be clear. We did not have a point guard. And for yeah. the longest while, we've been trying to 
develop our own point guard from like within who really wasn't ready and they yeah. really weren't there. Kemba is a true point guard and we're going to see that as this season continues. Yeah, Kemba's been, you know, he hasn't been amazing. First couple of games a little bit slow. Last game against Philly comes to life. The Garden cheering him on. The Garden just loves whenever Kemba gets into his groove. Evan Fournier kicked it off with that incredible game against oh, Boston. Wow. Yeah. When he's shooting threes, I feel like everyone's going in. But like you mentioned, the shot creation between these two guys and what they're helping to create on the floor is making it easier for Randall. Fournier and Randall have already showed an incredible understanding on the court. That two-man game mm -hmm. has been so impressive to watch. And I really look at it like this is the team for the playoffs, right? In yeah. the playoffs last year, we saw when Randall got covered, everyone else around him just fell apart. You couldn't mm -hmm. get buckets. Guys couldn't take it on their own. This team... Is built to play in the yeah. playoffs, right? I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but at least when it comes to playoff time, when Randall's getting double teamed, and now it's going to Kemba, it's going to Evan, or it's going to RJ, you have guys that can make things happen on the court. So I love these additions. I watch some of these games, and I can see when we're not playing well, we're still able to score. And this is something in the past that wouldn't happen. Absolutely. We, the Magic game, the first Magic game, actually, not the second one, the first one where we blew them out. Early on, Mo Bamba hit a couple of threes. And I think we were down, we were, it was pretty close. It was like 11, 10 or something like that. But I remember thinking, if not for Kemba, who's hit like three for three from three to start, mm -hmm. it might've been 11, four, because in the past there might've been Alfred, or there might've yeah. been Frank, or there might've been Dennis yeah. Smith Jr. And they couldn't get buckets. We got offense. Got offense. We got offense. <laughs> <laughs> our next point is about our three point shooting, which by the way, you told me this. So the next way back, what, like 13, 14 years ago? Well, I would one say of the 2013. Teams, so 20, that's, that, that's where the 13 came from. Yeah. 2013, we were one of those teams. We were one of the few teams. I think we were the highest, were we the highest scoring that, three point? I can't remember, but that year with, with the, the magical year, JR and Novak, we were, we, we were, were scoring kind of three pointers. We, like we, were like, we were like the team in the league that was scoring three pointers. Then we just stopped. <laughs> and all the other teams kind of took that and we're I going went, with it. You got, you got Golden State. You, I mean, these guys were like, you know, making winning games because they're able to score three threes in a row yeah you know and so what i'm seeing now this season already with this uh only the four games in we can score threes T and listen. it changes the game it changes the game we're shooting so many let me break down some stats for you guys right last year shockingly actually i mean people may not to the nba i think right. we knew we were hitting some threes last year reggie bullock was pretty hot rj was hot randall was shooting 40 percent. so we we're hitting our threes last year but we only shot a few times a game, relatively speaking. Right. So last year, we were actually, I think, third in percentage. We shot 39% from three, right? Right. But Brooklyn was second, and they were tied with us, and it's like 39 point something, right? So it's not that we weren't making them, we just weren't shooting enough. Last year, we shot 11.8 threes per game. We made 11.8. Okay. We shot 30 and made 11.8. Okay. This year, so far, we are shooting 46 threes a game, and we're making, what, 17.5. So the percentage is a little bit lower, it's only 38%. But we're making, what's that, like six more threes per game, yeah. basically? Yeah. That's a big difference. That's 18 huge, points. That's a huge difference. You know what I mean? And you're seeing it now. We have so many options. Guys are, guys are lighting it up from behind the arc. It is so much fun to watch. It finally feels like the Knicks decided to play modern basketball, <laughs> which is something we've been screaming for for years. How many games have you seen where we're scoring twos and other teams scoring threes and yep. just never catching up? Because so they, they, they're always going to outscore us, right? Gonna Look outscore. at last night's game. I think we outscored them in the third quarter by like a lot. Oh, like 26, 26 points or something that we outscored. We now. went crazy. Three point game is here. Everyone's hitting it. Lovely to see. At point number five, Bing Bong. The <laughs> band. Oh Woo! my goodness. Not that we didn't already know this, right? Exactly. Of course, we always knew New York fans are out. I mean, look at what happened in the playoffs. One win, and we went we ballistic. Were we went ballistic. <laughs> So, and you know, we all understand why we're behaving this way. It's been so long and we're so hungry and we so want it. But uh, Bing Bong has become the new uh, catchphrase from our trains uh, opening and closing. Side talk. Shout out to side, side talk. Side talk, you know, probably kind of put that, uh, that, that on the map. Yep. And everyone's using it now, but it's hilarious. But, you know, every game we've gone to. It's on the back page to, of the Daily News today. Wow. Every game that we've been to so far, and even you can see on TV as well, the fans are crazy. The fans are insane. The fans are behind this team like you wouldn't believe. And the other teams have to feel it when they oh, come Oh, they do. So oh, the when other, they, or, or when, when they're they home. Come. Right. Because oh, now our fans oh, are everywhere. Our, our fans are everywhere. Um, and, and what the fans are doing is everything that they're doing in the garden, they're sort of imitating that as well. Yep. So all of the fans already know to say to shout MVP when Randall goes to the free throw line. And all of the fans know to scream OB, OB when he's out. Yep. So it's like... Definitely, I think our players are 
feeling the love and support of this city for yep. sure wherever they go and the opposing team is also coming here and seeing all the love that new york is getting so you better watch out you better watch out listen the vibes are incredible the whole spirit around the team feels amazing the fans are spurring them on and like you said the other teams feel it and not to get into the whole players we're going to get an acquisition thing but when you see this vibe around the team, look at Evan Fournier retweeting the side talk video saying right. what I get myself into. <laughs> the, this He's been in the league like eight, nine years, if not more. And has that. not experienced He's this. not experienced that, right. right? This is a different level and players around the league are going to see this. They're going to be interested in coming to the team if, if that ever becomes a thing for us. Right. But, it, but regardless, this current fan base is pushing these players so much on the court. It's lovely to see New York basketball is back. Now we have a big, big, big test. Biggest game of the season, they're taking on Chicago Bulls on Thursday night, prime time TNT. This is going to be a big matchup. The Bulls, very improved and much improved. Alex Caruso has been great for them. Zach Levine, of course, right. you know, their main scorer. But now they got DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, Vucevic, who came over in that trade last year. There's a lot of good vibes in Chicago. In fact, it really feels like us and Chicago are the two teams that kind of rose up from the 90s and are back. Okay, okay. So, you know, okay. Bulls yep. is some. <laughs> so that game is going to be special. It's also going to be a very, very good test for us. Yeah. To see where we are. The slip up against the Magic was a little bit worrying, but they came back against Philly and, you know, made sure everyone knew, hey, look, we're legit this time. So... Let's see what happens against Chicago, in Chicago as well, but a homecoming, a couple of weird things about that night. Homecoming for Derrick Rose and Tom Thibodeau, who moved wow, game in Chicago. Wow. And it just happens to be, what? in Chicago, Joakim Noah Knight. <laughs> who, who are, wait, who are still paying this season, by the way? This is the last season we're paying him. So it's going to be Those some... contracts are so crazy. Interesting vibes. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Peace. Bing bong. And see you guys after the next game.